What's up, everybody? This is Rebel, and um, I want to come to you, and I want to um, talk about forbidden history. And the reason why I want to talk about it is because because we're coming out and we're speaking the truth, and a lot of people is is still tapped into this matrix. They got one one foot in and one foot out, and when we begin to tell them about things other than what they've been taught in school, see, it started from the school system. Now is now it's to the point you have people talking about that we're paying Africans that we 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 was over there in Africa yeah we was the first in America but we came from Africa you know they still talking about that so today I'm gonna break it down to the point if you don't understand it at this point then I don't know what to say for you and um uh, one more thing I want to talk about too a lot of people talking about um. How, oh, y'all better be careful, y'all. Let me tell you something. You're trained to think that way. You're trained to never, any righteous person is not afraid to talk. You all are, are afraid to talk because you're still caught up in this system and you think that is your God. You think this system is your God. So you're telling us to be quiet or, you know, be fear, fearful of our life. I'm never afraid to die. When, it, when it's your time to die, you cannot say you're not ready. When it's your time, it's your time. And that's just how it is. And what you don't know, you telling us to be careful, but you the ones that, that they're fat, fattening up, not us, because they can't do anything with us, okay? First of all, I want to read a book, and I just start, I, glam, I glanced at this book, but um, I glanced at this book, and I really, I glanced, glanced at it, and I really didn't deeply read it, and um, it's called Don't Call My Dummy No Dummy, and um, maybe... Um, Soon I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to break down this book because the, the author, his name is Jamil E.A. Shamsit Dean. I'm sorry. Jamil, Jamil E.A. Shamsit Dean. And um, he wrote this book and um, I just, I'm just going to read the first page of it. What I'm going to do is read, read, read the first page because it's very detrimental to us. But soon I will break down this book and read it. Okay. So I'm just going to read the first page of it because this is very detrimental to us. And it's saying, why is there a need to tell our story? The truth does not matter. It is the perception of the truth that matters. Now, let me read that again. The truth does not matter. It is the perception of the truth that matter. Henry Kissinger. Now, my writing work is not intended to convince you of anything, but the documents in one place, the evidence of who you are and why it is so important to not let the truth die with me when I transition. Transition meaning when I die. Most importantly, to leave, leave a record of well documented evidence that has been hidden in plain sight and placing the evidence at your fingertips of what has been hidden through canalization while stressing the importance of not discarding our ancestors past to stress and give information for you to not just accept an or, or alternate history that make you less than a descendant of a great people, which is that is correct that once lived and survived and even through years being attacked with a complete attempt to ethnocide and ethos, ethnocide that is mean when they deliberately and systematically um when they deliberately and systematic de systematic destruction of the culture of an ethnic group that's what that means so ethnocide and genocide by being written out of history completely that's when they turned us into slaves with, with a pen, okay? I have learned through research that the history taught through this educational system is straight uh, BS. And unfortunately, it's being rewritten constantly on a global scale. Only through uneducating myself and reading the pre-1950 primary source, books, journals, and publications, did I, in hopes, so... Will you see the game that has been put in place to tell the global, to tell a global noble story of conquest instead instead of the true most senator truth that's hidden 
in plain sight through scripture, scripted illusions. This book is very, very powerful. And um, I'm going to break it down. I'm going to break this book down. Um, I'm going I'm to break this book down and I'm going to read it. And one more thing I want to say. I'm going to go down to... Um, I'm going to skip a skip a chapter and I'm going to go go down to I'm going to read a little bit more from this book. And then I'm going to get on what I really want to read about. But the reason why I want to read this first chapter, because what we're doing is a lot of us, we're reading and, and, and we're learning about who we are. And, and our memory is coming back to who we really are. But listen to this. The country. Or better yet, leadership made over 650 treaties with our foreparents. And unfortunately, they broke they broke every one of them from the beginning of the system that we live in today, which started about about around 1871, meaning that this government, which was our government to start with. It was not the, the, the people that's in this government right now that just started when they sit up and try to tell you that, oh, it's been going on since 16. They're lying. We was in government. And when we had our government, only indigenous people of America could run, could run that government. A lot of people don't know that. Let me read this right here also. OK, I do not make this statement lightly because what has happened has happened and it is well documented and there is is so there is no way to sugarcoat our experience and the past hundred years back through what our foreparents went through between the 16th through the 19th century the ancestors were in were in all out wars against their humanity and we understand what humanity means because i know a lot of you y'all you know y'all sticklers when it come to words but we're going to keep it we're going to just keep going from military actions, concentration camps, uh, race riots, massacres, smallpox, sterilization, syphilis, radioactive, thymidine, which is DNA. They, um, I'm sorry, thymidine experience, which is that's dealing with your DNA. Suck Sunil Colleen. Suck Sunil Colleen. And that's which uh, experience, and what that is, that's a muscle relaxer they use it when you're when you um having surgery, uh, microscopic, zinc, cat, cadmium, cadmium sulfide particles, cadmium sulfide particles. Let's keep going. This is a very powerful book. And human cancer cell experience to the war on drugs. The crack epidemic and HIV, no one is co correlating, meaning correlating have it, meaning that it have a mutual relation or or like um, connection uh, correlating the current spike in autism or the school to prison pipeline. All of this have been used over the centuries to minimize minim, minimize the Indian, Negroid, Black, and Colored, and now so-called African-American population. Okay? This book, Don't Call My Dummy No Dummy, and I'm going to break this book down very soon, and it's by Jamal, Jamil, I'm sorry, Jamil E.A. Shamid Dean, and I'm going to put it up close so you can see this book. Please buy this book and start reading because soon I'm going to break it down. Thank you. And you can go to Amazon and you can get the book. This author sent me a PDF, but I don't do good with PDFs. I do good with books because I can highlight. And as you see, I didn't high, then started highlighting in the book, but um, I have to, and I have to write in my book. And that's just how I study to get it in my spirit, to get it within me. That's how I study. Anyway, I want to show you two books and I'm going to go, I'm going to read four books. And I, I wrote, I, I read that. And the reason why I read that, because I wanted you to understand what they have done to us. And his book started out real powerful. It starts out real powerful, meaning that he is, he is very awakened to what is going on. And a lot of us, we're still sleeping. You come on our channels and you want to fight with us. We're not here to fight with you. We're not here to debate with you. We're putting the information out and we're going to go on about our business because it's too late in the game. It's too late in the game for us to fight and argue and, oh, no, nah, we ain't going to do it this way. We, no, we ain't going to do that. We're just not going to do it. It's no point of it. 
So um, these are the two books that I'm coming from. Okay. And I'm going to I want to give you a history on these two books. One of them is called African King in them. One of the, one of them is called Ancient America. And the history on these books, the reason why you see white folks so quiet and not saying anything, because these two books came from a white person's house, a couple, a white couple's house. So they've been knowing the truth. And like when everybody tell you, everybody know your history and you don't, this is why we tell you that. Now, what are they doing with books like this? What are they doing? This is another book I got from a, from a white person. What, what is they doing with books like this? Forbidden history. Okay. Y'all better wake up. But anyway, I'm going to start since, since you're Africans and you Moors, y'all want to come at me and you want to say, oh, I'm wrong and I shouldn't do that. And the, 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 the Moors is the Indians and the Indians is the Moors. Well, then let's see. Let's see what they said. These books was written in 1967 and then they were written again. They were rewritten in 1971. So, um... They was copied in 1971. So these are the two books I'm going to go. I'm going to start with the, the ancient, uh, the African kingdom. The reason why is because I want to break down something. Okay. And I'm going to have to come to this book to show you something. So you show you what I want to show you. Now, let's go to the page of the introduction of this book. Because we're not, we're not going to make no more. We're not going to sit up here and let you all tell us our history. And anytime you're buying a book, anytime you're buying a book, and most of the books out here, these new books, will not give you the truth on a lot of stuff. Because that's why they want to digital, digitalize everything. You have to go into estate sales or go to thrift stores in order to find very good books. Sometimes I be in thrift stores for hours. If I know that there's an estate sale and I know it's a lot of books, I'm going. Especially if they're rich. I'm, I'll be there. Okay. So let me start this out off. And um, what this is, is this is the introduction. Now, I want to I want to show you in this book, they made it clear that the Moors and the indigenous people of America was not the same. OK, now let me let me let me read this. When the people of Europe overflowed into the rest of the world between the 16th and 19th centuries, the indigenous population of most colonized lands went under okay indians in america you hear that indians in america all right and aborigines of australia meaning that we're not aborigines we're indigenous we're indigenous indians came from columbus because because he thought he was in india and i believe he went to he didn't get to north america but he was in he was Close by us, but he didn't get to North America. He got like to the Caribbeans and places like that. He did not get to um, North America, meaning that the United States, the, the America, not South America, America, North America. He did not get here. So what happened was he looks, he saw the people and saw they were dark skinned people and thought that they were Indian. So he is Indian from people from India. He thought he was in India. So he began to call us Indians. But we're indigenous to America. Never put a name on who you are. Never put a religion on who you are. All right. So the 16th and 19th century, the indigenous population of most colonized lands went under. Indians in America and aborigines in Australia. Let me read that again. Aborigines in Australia had not sufficiently tamed and filled their continent. When you say America, North America is not a continent. Yes, it is. And I'm going to prove that today. Okay. Continent to prevent newcomers. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, Europe was melanated field. I'm going to tell you that too. They, they, they give you this outlook like it was all white people, but it was not. Okay. Let's keep going. All right. Now, this is how most of Africa looked back in the day. This is how it looked. Desert, and this is basically what it was just a big desert, it was really nothing there, okay. In the 16th and 1900s, okay. Now, let me show you very important, okay. Africans they tried, they traded gold and ivory, they traded with us, okay. The early explorers sometimes glimpsed these truths, seeing what other men afterwards forgot 
in 1498. Vasco de, Vasco de Gama and his Portuguese sailors having thrust their small boats. Wait a minute. Hold on. How did how that can be? Small boats? Hold on. What about y'all had 400 slaves coming over here to Africa? Oh, okay. Hold on. Let's, let's keep going. Small boats? Okay, hold on. It, I thought they would have big boats seeing that, you know, Europe, everybody was coming to get us and take us to... I understand they say Portuguese and all of that stuff, but small boats back then? But that's when y'all say that y'all was capturing us. Okay, hold on. Let's keep going. Small boats through the South Atlantic and around the Cape of Good Hope. Now, let's go down farther. 20 years later, Pope Leo X in Rome was astonished to learn from a captured Moor that the legendary city of Timbuktu, far beyond the southern skyland, had many scholars. So the Indians in this book, the Indians in this book that he's talking about, they're not Moors. Because then he would have said the Indians, the cap a captured Indian. Or the front part would have said the Moors of America, but it said the Indians of America. See, in this book, it have lies too, just like the Bible have lies. They have the truth and lies too. Now, let's not get it twisted. But y'all all through this, the Moors is all through this African book. But when I read the ancient American book, you're not going to see any Moors. Let's keep going. Okay. Okay. Let's read. Travelers. Splendorous tales. Okay. Ever since short, ever since stories of, of land beyond Egypt began to reach the Greek in the 5th century BC, Africa has fasc fascinated Europeans. But for centuries, so little was known about the continent. What? Hold on. Hold on. What, what am I reading? Hold on. For, but for centuries, so little was known about the continent that every traveler tale, traveler's tale, no matter how fanciful, was eager to believe. Then, as the Portuguese began to begin their ex exploration, exploration in the 15th century, the 15th century, I thought y'all knew Africa because y'all said that the Africans, y'all were friends and and, and y'all was friends. They said that Europe was fascinated by them. Hold on. Now I'm trying to get understanding here. Hold on. Then as the Portuguese began their exploration in the 15th century, accurate information began to filter back. This ain't making no sense. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Now, the city of Timbuktu. Fable city of wisdom. Hold on. Let's, 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 let's go right here. In the 15th century, Europeans began to hear traveler stories about the sophistication and affluence of Timbuktu, the intellectual capital of the Western Sudan when... Benedetto Deli in Florentine merchants visited the city in 1470. Hmm. He confirmed the legend. Legend he saw a metro metropolis, probably much like the one re at, recreated at Wright. Okay, I'm gonna show y'all in a minute. Where the streets was crowded with gods. Well, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. With goods borne by caravan from afar. Here, the round, widowless huts of the poor lay in the shadow of ornaments, mass, mosque, in the many windows home of the rich. Windowed home of the rich. The earliest full account of Timbuktu to appear in Europe came from a traveler historian, Leo Africanus, a Moor, who in the 16th century described the city 
city's resplendent court life and its scholars bountifully maintained at the king's cost. Oh. See, Leo Africanus, a more. Y'all got to know, y'all, and this is the city, Timbuktu. This is the city. This is a, just a drawing. Y'all got to understand that they're going to tell you anything to keep you sleep. Okay. Hold on one second. The oldest Africa, okay? 8,000 years ago, while, while, while of the Ice Age chilled Europe, the Sahara we know, we know today as an empty desert was a fertile region whose flowing rivers and grassy valley teemed with fish and wild animals. During the next 6,000 years in this inviting land, waves of migrants developed a series of increasingly advanced societies which they recorded in a collection of remarkably beautiful scenes carved and painted on native rocks the most complete rocks of the early african civilization of the stone stone age life to be found anywhere okay and this is this is it right now the oldest civilization in Africa. It's nothing there. I'm going to show you why they want you off of, off, this is the Sahara. That's the Sahara. I'm going to show you why they want you off your off this land and want you to be in Africa. And they trying to make their way over here. All right. Now let me show you something because I must have missed it. All right. Now, I want you, I can do it on this phone. I want you to look at this because we're going to get it right. We're going to get it right. Now, I want you to listen to this before I start because I know a lot of you naysayers going to come on here with your bull crap, but I'm ready for you. <laughs> listen to this and all you want, somebody, oh, have your work. I don't have to have nothing ready. I took communications in college. I don't have to have nothing ready. You can get off my page. That's what you can do. Here we go. Listen. Where did we stay? Arabia, Europe, Northern Africa, America here, all about to go there because of segregation. To say that white people created Marcus Garvey, then you stated they that did. we never went through slavery. I mean, you sound crazy as hell. My, what about... My, 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 my brother, my brother, we were never in Gambia or Senegal or Mali or Guinea or Nigeria before now. And if you have to ask the people that live there, because this is what I want you to understand, my brother. Now it's this way. So when you see the cracker pain that they know of their ancestors, they are just lying. Black is sophisticated. If your ancestors were here, my brother, you would have known of them. Are you saying there was never a slave ship? The Europeans never put Africans on a slave ship? Are you saying no, that's we not are right? never living there. Where did they find us? We were never in Gambia. Gambia was not founded. That's what I'm telling you. There was no Gambia before my grandmother lived there. And when my grandmother settled there, it was not Gambia. When Jawara come about to be president, this is when government started in Gambia. So what there about, no how do you explain Gory Island, where the slaves had to go through the doors of no return? Gory this is, this, Island. This, this, go about in Senegal and ask anyone who was there to tell you whether they were ever living there. They will tell you no one is ever here. All right. All right. Now, let me break this down and let me show you because until we see y'all want to sit up and y'all want us to go back to that slave narrative, we're not doing it. We're not doing it because it's not true. It's not true. I got to pull something up on this map, on, on a map here. Let me pull it up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this computer because um, y'all want to think that we're going to back down because y'all telling us, no, we're Africans. That's cool. You can say that all you want, but you the ones that's being set up for the okie doke, not us. You the ones being set up. Okay, I know what 
to do. Eighteen hundred map of Africa. All right, there we go. All right, that's what I want. All right, so let's start now. This is a map of Africa. In the 15, 1600s, I want you to look at it. All of this brown in this map, all of this brown right here, that's nothing but a desert. All of this brown, deserts. You see a little bit of green pastures. It was not a lot of people in Africa like they try to tell you. Now, I want you to look up close. Do you see Liberia? Liberia would be right around here. Do you see Sierra Leone? Do you see Guni? You see all these places where they say they came. Do you see Ghana? Do you see it? Now, let me show you. Let me show you this map right here. Okay. This is a 1600 map. And let's see what it say. And this is the Atlantic Ocean. This is where they're claiming. This ocean right here is claim, they're claiming where they came and got us from. No, they was taking us over here. They was taking us over here. They wasn't, they, they bought land and was taking us over there. All right. Now, let me read this. The people of Africa have been called small figures in a immersed scrutiny. Immense, I'm sorry, immense scrutiny. Immense, it it, it is indeed. Africa is the world's Second largest continent. Okay, who is the first? Who is the first? Okay. In area. It is a dominion of harsh beauty. Sometimes terrifying emptiness and unparalleled un 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 extreme. Unparalleled. I can't say the word and I know that word. Extreme. Topographic extreme. This is where they say we was all at. And it was a whole desert right here. That's a whole desert. Okay. And then they try to. Let me show you something. Another thing what they try to do. Because they're not doing anything but lying to you. See this right here. They claim that three North Americas could fit in Africa. But they just said that America is a continent. All right. Let me show you. It is a continent. What they left out, they left out all of this from right here all up here. They only gave you this much. See, when you study and you have to really study, you can't play with them because if you study, if, you, if, you, if you're going to study, you got to study for more than one book. You can't study just from one book. All right. Now, they claim that this is the motherland. Now, this book, and I've read from this book, book, this book before, Forbidden History. Now, let me show you something. All right. Okay. I'm going to start. Okay. Here we go. All right. All right. I'm going to start from here. And even the crown jewel of alleged human ancestral fossil, the famous Lucy. Remember Lucy? And they said in Africa, is she in Africa? Is she the oldest woman ever to be found? Remember when they said that? All right, let's let's continue to continue to, to read. Found in Ethiopia in 1974. Okay. Is indistinguishable from a monkey or an extinct ape according to many anthropologists all right so 
All right. And you know what indistinguishable mean? What that mean is, is that they can't tell the difference whether it was a human or a monkey. Let me read it again. Okay. And even the crown jewel of alleged human ancestral fossil, fossils, the famous Lucy found in Ethiopia in 1974 is indistinguishable from a monkey or an extinct ape, according to many anthropologists, not one, many. So they don't even know if that was even a human, even if the story is even true. All right, let's keep going. This right here is all of America. You see right here. That's America. Now I'm about to explain America. I'm about to let you show. One more thing I want you to see. Because there was not that many people in Africa. I want you to see their drawings. All right. I want you to look at them because I want you to remember this. This is this was their drawings that they found in Africa. This book is in 1961. Look at their drawings. This is they drawing. This is them. Because I'm about to show you us in a minute. That's them. It wasn't much of Africa. This is why everybody, they come to see you. You are the sleeping giant. And they all come over here and they send their stuff back to Africa. Because they know they're not you and you are not them. Let's keep going. All right. Let's keep going. Now, the earliest Americans, okay? Now. Now, let's read this. On the thousand of mile coastline explored, no civilization or substantial wealth had yet been found, which is not true. We know that's not true. The primitive inhabitants misnamed Indians because Columbus thought he was near India, had hardly any possessions. And when they were forced to be the Spaniards, when they were for, I'm sorry, when the Spaniards to work as slaves, wait a minute, hold on. And when they were forced by the Spaniards to work as slaves, they died almost at once. That's a lie. What they did is they turned us into slaves, to, claiming that they died all at once, once. And when they say primitive, we was people of the earth, people of the land. Yes, we was royalty, but we was people of the land. So the things that we did, sometimes we would go hunt. We would like to fish. We did all of that. That's the type of stuff that we did. We was never primitive. The life we lived when we would, when, when our aunties and, uh, you know, cousins, we would go off in, in the forest, you know, in the forest when we was young children. A lot of people don't remember that because they don't do that now. But we would go off and go out in the, uh, in the forest and be in the, you know, with the trees and stuff. That's what we did. But we didn't understand it because they, they stopped telling us we was indigenous to America. Okay. Okay, now there are plenty of good farmland. There was plenty of good farmland, but the fierce adventurers who swarm across the Atlantic had no love for farming, fresh from fighting the Moors in Spain. This book is telling on y'all. It's telling on y'all, really. Okay, they were eager for gold and glory and neither was in sight. And that's not true because we had it and we still got it over here. This is why they don't want you to wake up. I'm just about to show you. They want you to stay asleep. And that go Mexico when people sit up and say, no, Mexican. This is this is Mexico right here. This is where the old Max, the Aztecs, the Incas, this is where they were at right here. It's connected to North America. But those 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 light skin with the straight hair, those are like Spaniards. 
Those are not the real indigenous people of Mexico. The real indigenous, indigenous people of Mexico got carpet tone skin like me. Okay. And when you, when you say, oh, it wasn't no giants, it was giants all in America, in all over. That's a giant. They claimed what, what, th what, what this author said was that, oh, this is a baby Olmec. No, if a baby looked like that, only a mother could love it. No, that's not what that is. That's a, a Olmec, and then that's a giant right there. They were all over, and, all, and they're still here, but they're hidden. Okay, look at the nose. Now, this is our art. Now, you you tell me who is who. This is our art right here. How many people in your family got a nose like that, a long nose like that? Okay. Oh, what? It ain't no pyramids here? Oh, it ain't. There you go. And I'm going to show you some pyramids in America, too, in a minute. It ain't, what, and we ain't got the old big step? Yes, we do. We got them. It ain't no pyramids here, right? Because it was energy in them pyramids that healed all of us. The pyramids was very sacred to us. This is the this is his name, the legend of eight deer. That was uh he was a warrior. He became a warrior. He this was the Aztec. He became a warrior at the age of 19. Okay. All right. And you, you see a lot of us, and we got this nose pier in our nose pierce in our nose. Okay. Listen to here. Listen to this. A ceremonial nose piercing is performed on eight deer by the priest, permitting him to wear a nose plug is a sign of high official. Eight deer will wear a small jade <clears throat> rod stuck horizontally through his nose. Other officials sometimes wear gold ornaments dangling from their nostrils like earrings. That's why we do this. That's why we put stuff in our nose. You see them, they, them piercing his nose. Look at our, look at this is, this is us. And I'm about to show you something that's going to really blow your mind. And you have seen this picture before, but you didn't know what you was looking at. We ain't just no mediocre type people. We the real deal. That's why everybody come he come here to see you. They don't go. They don't go to Africa because it's nothing there, and they know it. Everything originates over here with you. That's why they had to make you and tell you you was a slave, and you was less than a human, three fourths of a, of a human, because they had to they had to um, mess with your brain to make you feel as though you were nothing and you the cream of the crop. And you should always walk in royalty, not arrogance, but royalty and know who you are. And don't let nobody play with you. Don't let nobody play with you. All right. Here we go. You see that this is a pageant hell. Now, let me put my hand right here. And you're going to tell me that those wasn't our people. There go one right there. He go me. You're going to tell me that these ain't my people. Right? These ain't my people, right? Look at my hand and look at his. All right. Okay. Royalty. All right. Now I'm going to show you something. Now, see, the reason why we lost our power had nothing to do with white people coming over here to conquer us. They lied They lied to you about that. It was white and it was everybody else helping them. No, we're not going to leave nobody out. Now, I'm going to show you something, a battle. See, when we was fighting each other, we've been fighting each other. 
Because it's, it's a righteous bloodline and it's a diabolical bloodline. It's two melanated bloodlines. Okay. I'm going to show you something since you say that, oh, we were fighting white folks. Let me show you something. Look closely. I want you to look closely. Let me see. All right. And you look right here. Look right there. See, you ain't nobody going to tell you this because they don't want you to know. See these two men? It looked like a red carpet tone. Then it looked like one that's darker. He got his hair and got a spear in his hand. He got a spear in his hand ready to kill the man. You see that? See, these two, they're fighting against each other. Do that look like a white man to you? Do that look like a white man to you? See, these are, this, is, this is in stone right here. This was a war. But, it, but if you don't look at it closely, you would never be able to tell. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. All right. Let me read a little bit of it. In this scene, one wears a jaguar figure as a headpiece, and the other, quazel feathers. And the third, a crocodile head. We were fighting our own kind. We were fighting our own kind. And this is what everybody been, this is what everybody have been telling you. And some people, and, and, and we didn't want to listen. And we thought that we were fighting white folks. They, that's just, that, that's just the, when you make a sandwich, that's just, it was in between a jelly and peanut butter. That's the sweet part of it, but that ain't that ain't the whole part of it. Y'all better know what's up. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. See this? When everybody show you this picture. See that picture? And you see these people right here. See, they won the war right here. And they all melanated, as you see. Let me read for you. Let me read for you so there you get a true understanding. Back at the Bo Nampak, B O N A M P A K, after the raid, the chief stand sternly atop the step of the ceremonial platform and passes the expected sentence to his captive. All right. Oh, you thought they were sunbathing because when I looked, I'm like, oh, look at them sleeping. All right, no, they was they was about to die. As Mayan Maya noblemen dressed in weird animal head assist in the riot, a naked prisoner prisoner at the chief's feet raises his arm in vain for some sign of mercy. Unlike the Mayan Maya themselves, who considered it an honor to be sacrificed for the good of all. These poor villagers, villagers seem thoroughly frightened. Look at him begging for mercy. Look at, look at him. He was begging for his life. He was begging for his life. And look at their hair. What, what, what person with straight hair with naturally straight hair wear their hair like in braids? Look at their hair. Look at their hair. Do that look like a white man to you? That's why we fight. That's why we kill with each other. Because it's a bloodline. It's a bloodline that's within us. I'm telling you. It's in your family. It's all over. It's in your family and it's all over. Look. This was after the ceremony. After when they had killed the people. See, after when they didn't kill me some, uh, some melanated people, because every melanated person is not you. Okay. Okay. The Spaniards landing in ancient Mexico was astonished, astonished by the high degree of social organization attained, attained by the pagan Aztecs. On one may well marvel at the orderness and good government 
See, we've been had government, which it is everywhere maintained. The conqueror, Herm, Her, Hermann Cortez, wrote Madrid, Ma, Madrid, under the their empire, the Aztecs had a well-regulated economy, a ruling class based on ability as well as birth, a system of low and high courts, and a strong moral code that held family and community above all. See, that's what they had to break our community. That's why they do what they do, and that's why they use melanated people that look like you. Some of them is you, and some of them is not you. Some of you them is you and have been programmed to treat you like garbage. Okay. A, okay. A system of low and high course and a strong moral code that held family and community above all. Fortunately, before destroying most of their old ways, the colonizers commissioned dozens of manuscripts to record Aztec society. On One of the best is Cortex Mendoza. Ordered in 1541. Okay. Now let me show you something. Now, okay, let me show you. Some of the stuff they, you know, let me show. Then they start getting light and sacrificing organs. And look how light they got now. And that's, that's, look, sacrifice. No, we ain't do stuff like that. We ain't do stuff like, no, we did. No, we didn't. Okay. And I want to say something because a lot of you get on here. I, one more book I want I want to show you because I want to show you the mounds over here. <clears throat> and then I'm going to say a couple of things and I'm going to let you go. When they tell you that they're not over here. Yes, they are. This is how we lived. You see that? That's how we lived. We was never poor, but we was people of the earth also. We was royalty and we was people of the earth. When you see them high mountains, and there's a lot of them, and we don't understand it, those are those are mounds. When you see them high mountains like that, those are mounds. Sometimes they made them out of out of animals. That's our stuff in America, right here in America. I want to show you mounds, and they all over. That's our stuff. When you see them mountains with, with, with three layers, that's our stuff. Okay. All right. And this is what I want to say. You people that get on my page and you sit up and you say, oh, well, um, you, you're dividing the people. Well, I just showed you that we were fighting with our own kind, people that was not us. I just showed you that. Okay. You want to say that because a lot of you, you are not the, the solution. You are the problem. So what you want to do is you want to come on my channel and you want to get mad at us or me because people like me is waking up and speaking the truth and you don't have the balls to do it because you believe the system have power over you and they don't. You want quantity, but you don't want quality. Quantity is the amount. Quality is the standard. We don't have to have standard as long as we melanate. It don't matter what we do to one another. That's what you want. That's what you want. You want quantity, but you don't want quality. But you want to get on my page and say what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, uh, uh, um, I'm separating us. Yes, you're right. I am doing that. Because some of us don't belong here, don't don't belong where I'm at and other people is at. And we know this, but we don't say anything. And the only reason I was real lenient because I thought I really was a slave. I thought that was my history. And the reason why they told us that history was to throw us off and us to make us believe that we was never nothing. And they had to do that because they was afraid of us. Let me tell you something, how powerful you are. And, and they're not going to tell you this. The, you see, you think the gun is the most powerful thing. No, it ain't. It's your mind. 
And the reason why I say your mind, because back in the day when we had our whole power, when we was powerful, we can use our mind and, 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 and kill a thousand people. Ah, oh, no, that seemed, no, it wasn't no fairy tale. That wasn't no fairy tale. The movie Carrie, that was us. Remember the movie Carrie? They are going to laugh. They're all going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. You remember that movie? And she was shutting door. That's the shit. That's, that's what we was on. But they had to dumb us down and they had to put people in our way and create these celebrities. So we got something to look at. And that's who we, 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 we thrive to be like them celebrities, which none of them really ain't shit. They aliens with, with, with melanated skin and they'll never help you. The politicians sit up there. We hungry. When that one knocked on your door and asked you, do you need some money? They know how we living. They know how a lot of us living. They don't give a damn because they have to make sure you come vote for them. So they know who's still in this, in this, who still believe in this before they ask, go to running. But no brick will be over. Every brick will be overturned. You do know that, don't you? See, this, this is us right here. Mm. This is us. Yeah. Thanksgiving is coming. When is it? No. November 26th or 27th. It's one of them days. It's a feast. Indians, it used to, we, we used to have a day where we had a feast. I get that. But see, you ain't celebrating it because of that. Okay? So, we have, let me show you something. You to tell who you you who know who you are. This may be for familiar to you. Okay. A lot of you don't want me talking because you part of the problem. Remember these? Remember these was in your in your in your family China cabinet. To Terry. Remember that? Them plates you used to, you used to eat out of. You didn't understand it, did you? Them the plates in, on Thanksgiving you used to eat out of, but see, those are Tartarian plates. Remember you used to eat out of them and, 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 your, and your grandmother and your mother and your auntie had the whole set of them. And you didn't even understand you was royalty and they took everything from you because of the bullshit we was doing. Okay, let me, let me, let me explain. Let me, let, let me just say this is what we going to do. This is what we do. Long as it ain't you, long, long as it ain't your kids. Long as it ain't you, you, you good. You the ones that's being fattened up, not me. Because, see, I know the truth. You the ones that's being fattened up. They want you to stay right there. They want you to stay right where you at. That's what they want. Anyway, you're going to deck the, you're going to make sure you clean up the whole house on Thanksgiving. The whole house going to be cleaned up. Pretty. Ooh. You're going to put that, wash that, get that linen, iron that linen, iron that white, that white little lace cloth you put on the dining room table. You're going you to deck it out. Have about two tables set up like that with all of that pretty Tatarian china on it. Have it decked out. You know that, you know that china how we used to get, get messed up. And I know now y'all use paper plates. Y'all ain't, you know, but I'm saying how we used to do it back in the day. And some of us still do it now. You're going to have that china, put that Tatarian china all over your table. Who you used to be. And you ain't nothing now. And then you're going to sit up there and invite the little drug dealer to help you pay for the food. Gonna, you're going to invite him and his his friends because, you know, you don't care about morality. You don't care about them selling that bull crap, the, the, them fiddling patches and all that stuff, stuff to pregnant women. Come on. Come on. He come with his expensive clothes on, which over there in India, they, they pay $5 to make that junk and come and sell it to you for two three $3,000. He's going to have on all of his stuff with his boys. And then... The, 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 the uncle who slept with his daughter, he going to bring him, his daughter, and the grandchildren, and his children, and he, the grandfather, and the father of them. You ain't going to care. And then, uh, 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 sister, your auntie over here that molested her son, oh, yeah, and, and, and allowed her brother to molest her. So all of them going to be there in one house. See, that's what you going to do. And they going to sit at that table, and all of y'all going to sit at the table. Sit there real pretty, have on all your expensive shit, trying to outdo one another, competition, scraps in a barrel. But then, it's what you didn't do. Did you clean up under the table? See, did you clean up under the table? See, that's what we try to hide, what's up under the table. We don't want nobody to know that, do we? 
And all of y'all gonna sit down and you gonna break bread and you wonder why we can't why why we can't get far. You wonder why our kids hate us. Cause we allow we allow fuck shit to happen to us and we don't say a damn word. You never wipe up under the table. You don't even want to go up under there. And now all your children have been hurt is right up under there. And then all these demons walking around and, 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 and they think they gods because nobody is there to check them. But in a minute, it won't be no more. In a minute, it won't be no more. You do know that, don't you? See, y'all don't want to hear the truth, so you want us to shut up. You don't want you you don't you don't want to hear the truth. Jesus loved everybody. No, I think you're wrong about that. Go to Malachi chapter one, verse three. It said, Jacob I love and Esau I hate. So what what God are you talking? I'm, I'm coming from, from the Bible, which don't belong in a church. It's a Bible. That's why a lot of you be dropping dead and be sick in that church and, and, and be broke and broke down. Still on the Bible, and, and, uh, on the piano with, with, with one motherfucking eye, all your legs gone. Because you don't want, see, the third eye is really the first eye. Because the third eye is what makes you think about a thing. These eyes is just for you to see. But your third eye is what, how you break down things. Y'all don't want the truth. Oh, no. What you talking about? Oh, that's it. The third eye is in the Bible, too. What it say in Matthew? When your single eye got light in it, your single eye, not these two, your single eye, meaning your penal glass when it's open, your third eye, when it got light, the whole body is light. And if that's not that, then the body is dark. When Jacob. When he was going to his nephew, when he was going to his uncle house, after when he had to run from Esau, was Esau and Jacob was two melanated people fighting with each other. When he had to go to his uncle house and he went to sleep and used a rock for a pillow and he and he had a dream and he fought with the angel all night. And the angel blessed him and changed his name from 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 Jacob to Israel. What did he call that place? P now. That's the penile glands. See, you, you, you don't understand allegory and metaphorics. And that's what's in the Bible. Allegory is symbolist, symbolism, which is what I just told you. Metaphor is similarities. We woke up for a reason. All of us ain't included in this. All of us ain't included. So when you get on my page with your foolishness and then I go to your page and your page is dry. See, because if you want to come on my page, come on my page and come on my page and respect me and I'll answer you. If I go to your page and see your page is dry, I'm not answering you because there's no point of answering to you. Because if you're not talking about what I'm talking about, then why are we talking? Because you're not going to change me and neither am I going to change you. The line have been drawn. It's the righteous and it's the unrighteous. Which one are you? You think Jesus is about to come and save you? No. 